So, Paul, uh, Manny? yeah, Manny yeah. here. Um, I did get a comment, and um, the, the comment was along the lines of, all right, well, Paul's showing us how to make his vacation videos. Um, and I said, no, that's not the point. Can you, like, explain why you're doing this and how it relates to the business world, maybe? One of the keys to supercharge lean is to make before and after videos. I'm just showing you how easy it is to edit something together and communicate to your team and inspire them to make more improvements. Because that's all I do every day. I watch tons of videos. I make tons of videos. Folks, hey, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, welcome to our monthly series. Um, this one's going to be Lean is Simple Continued. And uh, in this one, Paul is going to be talking to us about communication and how his organization communicates and, and the things that can be done. So uh, I personally am very excited about this. Um, for October, we're looking for other people. So how about you? Yes, you. Uh, maybe you don't think you have anything to say, but uh, I certainly can work with you to, to be able to do that. How about you? Yes, you. Keep that in mind. Other methods of engagement, you can find us on LinkedIn, you can find us on MyASQ. And of course, if you are not one of the, the 1,900, almost 2,000 people that are members of uh, LED on YouTube, if you subscribe, you'll, you'll know when we're posting uh, a new video. Well, welcome everyone. My name's Paul Akers. Some of you know me. I've written a book called Two Second Lean. I've actually written five books now. My books are in 19 languages and I have a great app. If you don't know about it, it's called Two Second Lean Play. It's all free and you can get, listen to all my books in the audio format in nine languages. So pick a language and listen for free. It's designed for everyone to listen to. So there's no obstacles. So today what we're gonna talk about is communication, lean communication. And I know there's probably one or two people that still have their mics on. Make sure your mics are off because I can hear background noise coming through. Everyone check their mic real quick. Okay, so everyone can hear me. So I have a dilemma as an author and someone who people know quite a bit is I get contacts from people all over the world every day. I get like between 100 and 300 contacts a day easily. And you might wonder how I could possibly respond to all those people let alone in a timely fashion. So I respond to everybody just about just in time. I mean, nobody really ever waits on me for anything. You know, how in the world can you do that? Well, I made a, a conscious decision about 10 years ago that I wasn't gonna do what everybody else does when it comes to communication. And I got rid of email essentially. And so today's talk, we're gonna talk about how I communicate effectively with hundreds of people every day and have a normal life. So we're going to start off the talk. I'm going to share my screen here. Just give me a second here. And this is a short talk, not too long. And should be hopefully interesting. Here we go. We're in Chicago. And I'm going to take you to a place that most of you have never been. And that would be Kazakhstan. It's the ninth biggest land mass. It used to be part of the Soviet Union. Uh, I don't know, 10, 20 million people. I worked there for four years with the largest construction company in that country called the BI group. I spoke to thousands of people all the time and I learned a lot. I went there to teach them about lean, but I learned a lot when I was there. And this is Ivan, the president of the company and it's a huge company, 7,000 employees, billions of dollars of business. They have 40,000 subcontractors. They build roads, bridges, hotels, condominium developments, oil refineries. I actually worked on the biggest construction project in the world, a $39 billion project in the Caspian Sea, a new oil refinery. And so I had a lot of experience when I was there, a lot of great experiences. So this is just an idea of the scope of some of their projects because they're building all over Kazakhstan. Most people wouldn't think Kazakhstan maybe is this advanced, but it's a very advanced, pretty advanced country, you know, pretty first world in many regards, a lot of cool construction projects that these guys have done. And one of the things I taught them, or they taught me, was how to make a joint chat on WhatsApp to communicate all the improvements. So imagine with 7,000 employees and 40,000 subcontractors, and I told them all they had to do was fix what bugs them and make short little videos before and after and explaining to people what they'd done. They said, oh, I know. And I told them to use YouTube. And they said, no, we're not going to use YouTube. We're going to use WhatsApp. So what they did is they created these WhatsApp chats with 100 people on every chat. And then people were constantly sharing their improvements all day long. So these are their superintendents showing me their phones and they get so many improvements, they can't even look at them every day. It's that incredible. 
And so this company over the course of four years ended up saving you know, hundreds of millions of dollars through their improvements. But the key was their communication and how they did it. They did it in a very innovative way. I never thought about doing this. You know, six, seven years ago when I was there, people were using WhatsApp, but I didn't think about making a big joint chat. So they established all these joint chats with everybody, and then they could share improvements like this. So they're building a bridge here, and they're building bridge after bridge after bridge because they're building freeways. And they were shoveling this gravel back behind there. And they said, oh, well, we'll just cobble together something really quick on the front of our machines so we can push the gravel back back there perfectly, really simply. And they saved a bunch of time. Well, they needed to communicate that to everyone in the company. So people realized that if they just started using their wits and not their wallet, they could solve these problems. So communication is very important. They didn't do an email blast. They simply put all these improvements on a chat and that's how they did it. So this is kind of what it looks like real quick. So I click on WhatsApp here and you see Kazakhstan, I is the president there and Kazakhstan lean one. And you can see all these improvements. I'm just scrolling through, it's just endless improvements. All these videos, very easy to forward to somebody else. So if a supervisor gets this, and he sees it and he says, oh, you know what, my, my friend who's a supervisor in another project, I should send that to him. He just clicks on a couple of clicks, boom, forwards it on to him. It's really simple, way easier to email. You have a running dialogue now of all these improvements. Everybody sees all the activity. It's inspiring to everyone. And they just named it Kazakhstan Lean 1, Kazakhstan Lean 2, Kazakhstan Lean 3, Kazakhstan Lean 4, Kazakhstan Lean 5. They had so many chats, it was unbelievable. And they just broke it up into groups of 100. So this is one of the first things that I want to convey to you is that email is very cumbersome and very slow. And if you're working on platforms like WhatsApp, you can easily disseminate information quickly and effectively because WhatsApp will take up to a four minute video. I mean, I could post a four minute video. Of course, you don't, you want to keep them pretty short. We say 60 seconds, but four minutes is a big video and it's really, really effective. You see, I'm clicking on all these different chats and everybody's sharing all their information. And the net result was their quality went through the ceiling, uh, their teamwork went through the ceiling and they saved hundreds of millions of dollars. So this is a cool thing that I learned in Kazakhstan of all places, using WhatsApp to create improvement chats for people. Now, I wanna to explain to you the main platforms by which I communicate every day. And this, these are the three apps that I use. Cause I, 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 I maybe get, I might get four emails a day. Could you imagine someone like me only getting four emails a day? How could that be? Sure, I get some junk mail. I probably get about 25 pieces of junk mail. I click those off in seconds but I maybe get four meaningful emails a day. And as soon as I get those emails and anybody wants to ask me anything other than just like one question, I just say, I don't communicate on email. I hate email, it's super slow. I communicate on any one of the following three platforms, Boxer, Signal, or WhatsApp. So if you're on any one of these, you can reach out to me there. My cell number, here's my cell number. But if you're gonna talk to me regularly, like a couple times a week, I always force everyone to go to Voxer. You might wonder why. Well, because Voxer is a Ferrari. It is really, really fast. Signal and WhatsApp are a minivan. They're great for big groups of people with big, dense information, where Voxer is a fast walkie-talkie communication actually developed for the Navy SEALs and Special Forces so they could have a fast and rapid way to communicate with one another. And I'm gonna show you an example of both of them right now, okay? So let's see here. I don't know why that's doing that. It should be advanced, but it's not. Huh. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's WhatsApp, and I'm going to show you what's. No, this is Signal. I'm going to show you first. Signal and WhatsApp are identical. So about a year and a half ago, we switched off of WhatsApp on 90% of all of our platforms. Went over to Signal for privacy issues with Facebook because we don't like Facebook. We don't like all the the data mining they're doing, all that crap. So. We switched over to Signal. Signal is basically the same platform. So this is what Signal looks like, and I want to show you what we're doing here. So here's Signal, and I have all these chats. I have Japan. I have the two-second lean, no bulls uh, lean chat, and people are posting. There are hundreds of people. It's just crazy the number of improvements that are being posted. And then I have Japan Study Mission because I lead teams to Japan. The stand, Japan Study Mission Team 33, Team 34, Term 13, 35, 
everything that we've ever shared in the chat so you can scroll through all the all the media right here and quickly grab it save it share it do anything you want so it's just robust and fast and easy where email you got to do all these searches within whatsapp or you just go to this chat you can scroll through in a quick second you don't lose anything it's just fabulous. And you see, I have all these different chats. This is the chat for my company, FastCap Two Second Lead. So every day people are posting uh, messages and I reply to every message that people send me. So every video that improvement of FastCap, I reply back to everyone. Why? Because I can send an audio message. It's so simple. And then when I go over to, to WhatsApp, this is WhatsApp. The one advantage of WhatsApp now is they finally figured this out. You can actually change the speed. Do you see the speed right there? It says times one. If someone sends me a message and they like to talk too much, I just click on that 1.5, two, and I can speed up the speed. And that is a big deal for me because I don't have the time to listen to people bloviate and go on and on and on. So this allows me to get through things really, really quickly. So WhatsApp is a powerful platform, but not as fast as, as Boxer. So I'm gonna show you Boxer now because it's like over the top. So Boxer is a Ferrari. So again, very few emails, everything Boxer signal WhatsApp. So this is what WhatsApp looks like. So somebody sends me a message, they got this big orange button down there. So WhatsApp and signal, they have little tiny buttons. So I push that big button and then I can send a message to Andrew real quick. I can listen, see I've got it on four times speed. So down below I've got four times, there's one time speed down at the very bottom. Then I can click on it again and go to two times speed or three times, whatever speed. So he happens to be from Australia. So I have to listen to him a little bit slower because the accent's a little tough, but two times, three times works, but four times might be a little rough for me. And then in order to communicate back to him, I simply just hold down the button. I don't type. I mean, typing is has to be, this is where I'm going to piss you guys all off right here. See, I'm sending a message right now. I'm just holding down the button and letting it go and just speaking. Typing has to be like the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I can't even believe, first of all, it's flat information. You have to stop, you have to read it, and then you don't get the intonation of their voice. You don't get any of the emotion, anything else. With a with an audio message, you get the depth of information is so much more powerful. So I have my gardening team on there, people who take care of my home. Everything's posted, all the details. I can scroll back and look at all the messages they've sent me, anything they've asked me. They wanna show me what I'm doing. I can look at it in a split second. Look at my garden here. They're showing me how beautiful they have my garden. Is this incredible? The videos here are only up to 60 seconds. So it's not as robust. It's not that big mini bus, but you can still do so much. And look at all the people that I'm speaking to. It's just crazy the number of people I'm in communication with, but I can do it easily. It's no stress. When I get a boxer message, I don't get stressed out. When I get an email, I get, I get this anxiety. It just drives me crazy. I can't stand it. I've got my son on there. I'm sharing him what I'm doing with the Dominican Republic. I can scroll back and look at all the all the messages. It's just fabulous. All my all my plant manager, all my superintendents, everybody's on this app. I communicate with my entire company on this single app. This is really quite amazing. So Voxer is a Ferrari. So this is the two, the, the basically the two or three platforms that I operate on. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is. I use video. A lot of you know who I am because of the videos that I post on YouTube. So I made this video that is 60 seconds long. It took me five minutes to make it. I shot the video and edited it in five minutes with background music and voiceover and everything. And I, and I use video for everything. And I, I don't have a, I don't use my laptop. I do everything on my iPhone. It's really amazing when you learn how to communicate at this level. So I teach people like this around the world and it changes their life because they never thought they could convey to their friends and family when they're on vacation or their company or their organization, what they're thinking. I rarely ever do anything other than video because it's so, the, the depth of information is so incredible. So let's watch this video real quick and I'm gonna explain to you how I put this together. The first thing I do is I want to bring you the 40,000 foot view and show you on Google Earth where I am right now. So you ready? Here we go. Here we go. So the first thing I do is a new movie and iMovie and I start clicking off all the media that I want to use. So you see I'm clicking these little blue things up there. If I want to use, there's another clip down there, two more clips. And the last thing I do is create movie. So now I've got all the video footage in. 
and I did a Google Earth screenshot. So I went into Google Earth and I clicked on where I was and then I did a screen recording. I just simply recorded it on my iPhone. It's super simple to do on Android. I'm sure you can do the same thing. And this is where I am. I'm in Salinas in the Dominican Republic. And then I clip out the rest, that part of it. And then I do a 360 or a 3D version rotating around it. So watch what this looks like. So immediately the viewers go, oh, where's Paul today? I'm in the Dominican Republic kite surfing in Salinas in this fabulous bay. And then I rotate around the bay. It's just so simple. It takes me seconds to do all this. And when I show people how easy this is, they can't even believe it. So there you go. I'm gonna do one more view, make sure everything looks good. I'm just doing final little edits. I have a nice transition between the things. See, I'm adding a transition. I'm gonna speed this up. I'm gonna slow this up at the very end so that it's a little slower when it comes right in. There we go. Then I'm gonna rotate around it. So I'm just kind of adjusting speed so it looks more comfortable for the viewer. And then we're gonna show you what this all looks like when I'm done because it's really a cool video and it took me five minutes to make it. So there's our 3D. Now I'm gonna zoom in. This is actually the beach now that I'm on. I put a transition between it. There's my foil board because I'm foiling and I'm doing this all, but I don't, but there's some of this that you really don't need to see. So I'm gonna start cutting and trimming it out. So you're interested. I try to keep clips to no longer than three seconds. Then Umberto, this is my instructor. He shows up with his dog and he starts screwing around. And I go, oh, well, you know, that's a good clip, but that's not a great clip. Let's see the really good clip. No, that's not a good clip. So I'm still looking for a good clip. I'm scrolling through. And then this one, oh, it goes really high. So I'm gonna cut it right there. I'm gonna just select it, then just cut, split, and delete the first part. So now it immediately goes into the good footage. Oh, look at him real high. Look at the dog. Undine Dean is the dog's name, and Undine's chasing him as he's flying through the air on a kite. It's so cool. Then the next thing you know, Umberto jumps in the water, and he's a kite master, and he goes flying through the air, and I get that little clip, and I say, oh, well, you know, we don't need any of that, so let's just trim all that out just when he hits the water. Let's keep it really simple, and then I want to add some more clips, so I just say add more clips plus, and I'm looking for another clip. Ah, oh, let's say, oh, then I had more friends show up. And then the wind started blowing really hard. Look at the white caps here. They had the, I had the windmills in the background and people are kiting across this bay. Really cool action shot. Put that in. Oh, and then, I, then Umberto wants to show us a Jesus walk. So his girlfriend's standing out there and I film him and he's coming in, but I only want to film the Jesus walk. I don't want to film all the other stuff because I don't want to waste people's time. So I trim it all up and boom, there he goes. He does a Jesus walk across the water. Boom, and then I want to trim all this out because we don't want to waste anybody's time here. We want to get rid of all the bad stuff and only keep the prime content. And then in the morning, I want to add another clip. I go plus, I went out on my e-foil. Anybody know what an e-foil? This is an electric foil. I don't even have to have a kite here. And Umberto took his drone out. I didn't even know it. And he was filming me when in the morning. I'm sitting on this thing like a magic carpet. I was riding it for an hour standing up. I got tired, so I just sat on top of it. And Umberto was filming me. Look how glassy smooth this bay is compared to what it normally is when we're kite surfing. So in the morning, I e-foil. And this is all 60 seconds I can convey to anybody, my friends, my family, what I do really, really quickly. And then I want to add another clip, Umberto doing a beach start because this is like wicked cool. Watch this. Jumps off the, off the sand into the water. Boom. And then I'm going to trim it all, get rid of all the bad stuff again. Boom. And away we go. And this video is almost done. We're going to add, I think, one more clip to it uh, because in the evening, I got a sea urchin in my foot and from walking out there. And so Umberto and his girlfriend, Nargis, they were kind enough to scrape the sea urchin out of my foot. And I got another one in there since then. So we put that and that's how we're going to end the video with them pulling the sea urchin out of my foot. So look how fun this video is. And then, so now everything's put together now. The whole thing, it's only one minute long, very active, very, very dynamic. I'll add a little music here. Hey, I'm playing through the whole thing. It all looks good. Now I'm going to cancel and I'm going to go back, 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 and I'm going to add audio or a voiceover. No, I'm going to do a voiceover right now. And I simply just push it. And when I'm talking, all I'm doing is describing what I'm seeing. So I'm saying, oh, welcome to Salinas in the Dominican Republic. This is like, oh, I didn't like it. It was a bad clip. So I'm going to just retake that. Okay, just deletes it and does it over. Welcome to Salinas. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world that kite surf. The wind blows all the time. It's just crazy. It's this gigantic bay that's completely open for kite surfers. And I go there every morning to kite surf. I brought my foil today. 
And it was just an epic day. I was there all by myself. But before long, Umberto, my instructor, showed up. And he's a wicked good kite surfer. And he's flying across the sand with his dog. But then he jumps in the water. And he shows us all these amazing tricks that he does. Look how he flies through the air. Lands perfectly every time. The guy is just a superstar. But then more of my friends show up. And next thing you know, we're kiting across this bay. It's just absolutely epic. And then his girlfriend says, hey, show me a Jesus walk. And the next thing you know, Umberto's doing a Jesus walk. But in the morning, at 8 o'clock in the morning, when the water was glassy smooth, I took my e out there all by myself again. And Umberto flew his drone from his home in his bed, flew out to the bay, and took a video of me. And then when he got out there, he started doing beach starts, which are really cool. But I got a sea urchin from walking out there in the morning. But nice, Nargis was nice enough to take it out of my foot. Done. Except... And the voiceover is done. So now I've not just made a video, but I've told a story. Now I'm going to add audio. I'm going to go to my music tracks and my iTunes library. I'll go to my albums or artists. I choose a choose a track that I like. Let's see who I'm in art in motion. I'm going to choose Annie McKay, really cool music. Drop an uh, audio track in there, and there you go. I'm playing the I'm playing both the voiceover, the music, the video. Everything transitions perfectly. Everything plays perfectly. It's super smooth. And I did the whole thing in five minutes. Now, imagine if you could communicate to your team, your friends and family with videos this effectively. And this is a relatively complex video. There's a lot of clips in here, a lot going on. Most videos just simply need to be a before and an after, particularly when it pertains to improvements. You just need to show the problem and then the solution. But if you're going on vacation and you're a kite surfer and crazy like me and you want to show people all the cool things you do, there you go. There's the video. And you can see it just playing across that whole thing. I can edit. I can change anything. Notice how quick the video clips are. Generally, only three to four seconds. You don't want to spend a lot of time on a video because people get bored very easily. This is a very important part about communication. You want to be pithy. You don't want to bloviate over and over again. People are tired of people talking. Just show them what you want to show them and move on. So that is the essence of lean communication when it comes to just making videos. It's very, very simple. So let's go to the next video here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that. Okay, so now making the complex simple. So this is what this video looks like without all the editing and everything. So now you can just kind of see how beautiful this looks without the music. Unfortunately, in this platform, WebEx, you can't hear, but you can kind of see how pretty this looks in just five minutes, I made the whole video. And you saw how he did it. It's very fast, very simple. Show up to the beach. Nobody's there. Weather's perfect. Wind's starting to come up. And Bertha shows up, starts playing with the dog. Very, very cool. Quick clips, everything going. Boom, he does a snap. He does a roll, pulls across, punches the landing down, and away he goes. Next thing you know, more friends show up, and they're kiting. The windmills are blowing like crazy. And life is good in Salinas. Next thing you know, Umberto shows up to Jesus walk. Ba, 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 boom. And stop the video. Immediately transition into the e-foiling in the morning. An electric e-foil. This is just like really wicked stuff. There aren't very many people in the world that have these things. They're very expensive. About $12,000 a piece. And there you go. A beach start. Really cool. Notice how beautiful. And they pull the sea urchin out of my foot. So that's what that video looks like. And it was that simple to do. It should not be intimidating to anyone. On the iPhone and the iMovie, it's very simple. I know Android has some pretty decent video making software as well. I prefer iPhone. I'm a little biased in this regard, but that's just me. So let's see if I can bam. Okay, now this is the next part of communication. So in my company, we have to communicate all of our products, or if it's about lean, I have to communicate different concepts about lean to people. And people always say to me, Will you put me on my email list? And I say, Sure, I'll put you on the email list. You know, we'll send out an email blast, but our emails are different than most people's. Notice what it says at the top there. I, Lori, are you focused on yourself? Just ask one simple question. Again, we're not bloviating. We're not saying a lot of words. Watch the video. And we show them a video link and they click on it and then they can watch the video. This is how we communicate with our customers. We send it simple. We don't put 30 points down there. Nobody wants to read that stuff. You know what I do when I get emails like that? I do the same thing you do. I delete them. I'm not interested in watching them. So when we communicate with email, it's always very short, very pithy, and straight to the point. Okay? So now, the next thing I want to show you, this is super powerful. Some of you might know what Text Expander is. It's over the top. It's one of my favorite programs that I use. 
So text expander allows me, if someone asks me a question like, how do I start lean? I just type in the word simple, S-I-M-P-L-E, and boom, it populates everything they need to know. If they say, I want to know, I want to see some lean, other lean companies, I type in the words tour, T-O-U-R, or A-M-E tour, and everything populates with all the links. It takes me seconds to do all this. Watch this video. You'll see how I do it. So first thing I do is I type in text expander. I'm going to show you this, what my text expander looks like. So I click on that and all these are expansions. And all I do down at the bottom, you see, I type in the word Cambridge. And now on this one, I'm gonna to go to, I have my passwords in there. I have everything in there. So this one's the key to lean. So you type in the word K-E-Y at the bottom and it populates that entire thing. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how it works. I'm gonna pull up a new email and now I'm gonna change my keyboard at the bottom. Look at, I changed this blue keyboard and I type in simple, boom and it populates everything they need to know point by point. I've carefully constructed this, this for people. So now they get a quality product quickly. No, they don't have to wait for me to reply. If I wanna do another one, I type in tour, watch this. All the links to all lean tours of two second lean companies all over the world. They just click on them and they go. It's just unbelievable the amount of time it saves me. And then people are blown away because they go, God, you give me so much content so quickly. I say, well, of course, because I do lean communication. You have to do it that way. So you've got WhatsApp, you've got Signal, you've got Text Expander, you've got iMovie. You have quite a few platforms here that are extremely effective for communication, for lean communication. So having said that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and take some questions. Anybody have any questions? So, Paul, uh, Manny? yeah, Manny yeah. here, um, I did get a comment and uh, the, the comment was along the lines of, all right, well, Paul's showing us how to make his vacation videos. Um, and I said, no, that's not the point. Can you like explain why you're doing this and how it one of the keys to supercharge lean is to make before and after videos. This is one of my points that I developed in two second lean that nobody else ever really thought about. Toyota didn't think about it. Nobody thought about it. And I thought, gee, in today's day and age, Everybody communicates on YouTube, Instagram, and, and with videos. And so 10 years ago, when I saw the trends, what was going on, I said, we got to start making videos. And all you want to do is show before the problem and then solution. And most of you guys have watched, I'm assuming, women and guys have watched some of my videos. You always see I show the problem and I show the solution. I'm just showing you how easy it is to edit something together and communicate to your team and inspire them to make more improvements. Because that's all I do every day. I watch tons of videos. I make tons of videos. And I inspire the world. That's why my book's in 19 languages. I didn't go around and say, I want to put my books in 19 languages. Those translations happen because people wanted to translate my books in Turkey, in Turkish, in, in Russian, in Japanese, in Thai, in Spanish, in, in Dutch, in German. They wanted to do it. They said, Paul, your, your content's incredible. Can I translate? And I said, absolutely. Well, why is my content incredible? Because it's- You know, you mentioned the word flat versus rich information transfer. Right. right. And I could see like, if you're a maintenance person, instead of the machine doesn't go to pocket to pocket the way it's supposed to, but you could show somebody how it does sound or what it does. I love it. This is how we communicate my company every day. Everything's done with video. If there's a problem or if there's a new setup or a new process, we make a process video. And then right on the machine is a QR code that you scan with your phone with the photo app and it brings and it's linked on a YouTube link and people can watch how to set up the injection molding machine instead of hiring a technician to come in at $300 an hour. You kind of did a throwaway, you know, your video clip shouldn't be more than three to five seconds long. Absolutely. Um, and my rule of thumb is no more than 10 seconds unless you're watching history and being made. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It needs to be short. Can you talk about that? Maybe less is more kind of thing? Well, if you ever watch a Hollywood production, you know, it's very often that the camera will stay at one angle for more than two or three, four seconds because they know that the attention span of people is very limited and people get bored unless there's something riveting going on. They're just not going to watch it. So it behooves us as lean thinkers to emulate that high level production. I mean, why would we want what? Do we want to bore people? Do you want to inspire people? Do you want to bore people? So I just saw what Hollywood was doing and I said, I'm going to do the same thing. So I add music. I, I do things that make it interesting, particularly the voiceover. That's the thing that people are really intimidated by 
how do you speak like that? Well, all I do, all I'm doing when I do a voiceover is I'm not reading a script. The script is the worst thing you'll ever do. You're not speaking from your heart. All I'm doing is looking at the video and describing what I'm seeing with passion. And it's really that simple. There's nothing complicated about that. That's the essence of this talk. Complex, Manny. If you make it complex, I'll guarantee you, you won't do it. If you make it simple, you'll do it all the time. Hey, Manny, this is Ellen. I can add a couple of the questions that came through. Um, one of them was, with the multitude of conversations on a platform such as Signal, how do you index and locate a video or text? Oh, simple. Well, text, well, text you just type in the search engine. I just did that today, actually. Uh, I'm trying to think, what was I searching for? I think uh, somebody, oh, yeah, I know. Somebody sent a video that said 30, in, no, 10 improvements in 30 seconds. 10 improvements in 30 seconds. And I was clicking around between different platforms, checking my messages. And I saw that one. I go, oh, that looks really interesting. But before I could click on it, I clicked on another platform and I lost track of it. And I went back and I couldn't find it because I was scrolling through. So I just simply typed in 30 seconds and boom, it came right up. And I clicked on it and watched it. So it's very simple. And then if it's a bit, let's say there is no text, no text attached to it, which oftentimes there is, but let's just say there isn't, then I would just click on that platform. I click on the images down below and just scroll through them with my finger, just really fast. And you usually remember what it looked like, what the video header looked like, and then click on it and go. Simple, very simple. Oh, sorry. Another person had a question about data privacy by using these tools. Well, you know, if you're if you're paranoid about that, then you're paranoid about that. You're going to live your life that way. I'm, I'm not I'm not paranoid about that. I don't care. I'm very a public person. I'm very open. I mean, what, you know, for instance, here I'll give you an example. So we have processes internally in our company, and we don't want the whole world seeing those. They don't need to see them. It's not relevant. So we have a YouTube channel, and everything's unlisted. So all of our data that needs to be private goes on our unlisted YouTube channel and all the links are unlisted. So it's only viewed by people internally who are logged onto that website can watch it or who have the link. That's one way. You know, we've heard lots of people post all these videos on their the server. So it's on the intranet instead of the internet. You can do that too. But, you know, I don't get hyper, I don't get hyper paranoid about, you know, you look at a company like mine, you think the whole world will be copying what I'm doing. I put, my videos have millions of views. The tour videos of my company have over 1 million views. You would think I would be paranoid if everyone copying what I do. I could care less. I mean, you know how much work it would be to copy what I'm doing? It would, <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd kill yourself. It'd, it'd be exhausting. We've made millions of improvements. I don't even worry about that stuff. I, I think people are way over hyper paranoid these days. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, proprietary information is handled a different way. So um, that's a, a very good point there. So one of the things that we had been talking about before was um, the idea of, of really just getting in there and trying this, you know, Paul, I mean, because you seem so accomplished as a beginning filmmaker. I know that it, it can be a challenge, but if you do like the goal of one minute, now it's not so intimidating. Anymore. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you got to use an easy platform, too, though. iMovie is so unbelievably simple. It is not as powerful as the as the video platforms on on uh, the Android, but this is why I like the iPhone is because I don't need to be able to do everything. I just need to do, do something well. <laughs> you know, I don't have to be able to make a moonshot every time I make a video. That's just crazy. I just need to pass voiceover, music, edit the clips, transition, done. Yeah, it's funny. I've been doing uh, webinars videos uh, for two years now, for over two years on uh, LED. And for a year and a half, I struggled through Windows software. Oh, yeah. and oh, it's terrible. It wasn't until I, I switched over to iMovie that um, my filmmaking, if you will, even if they're just webinars, kind of exploded. And because you it is so easy to do. Yeah. Power. Exactly. Yeah, and think about it's what you want to do. Get something done right. and have it something then have nothing done because it's not perfect. Here's a really good question I'd like to add. Um, it's what roadblocks did you face from convincing the organization to adopt the new form of this or this form of lean communication and how did you overcome them? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a bit of a dick. I'm a, you know, I, I, I joke, but there are certain things that are immutable and that are not negotiable. And, and we're not gonna, we're not gonna communicate like the rest of the world. We're not doing email. You're not gonna spend 
all my time and money every day answering your freaking email. You're not going to do it. Okay. So get over it. It's not happening. We're going to communicate on Voxer and Signal and WhatsApp. And if you don't like that, you need to find another company to work at. So, you know, if you want to do it, what everybody else is doing, you go ahead. But as I tell people, this is a good example of what I tell people. The top companies in the United States per employee man hour produce $150. So if you're a well-run organization, if you were to factor how much product gets made and out the door every day per man hour per person, it's $150. You know what it is at my company? $700. So I summarily reject the way everybody else is doing business. I'm a $40 million company and I have no marketing department and no sales department. I have no HR department. I don't have all the nonsense that everybody else has. I don't need it because we move at the speed of light. You want to talk to me? You go on my website, my phone number, my cell number is right there. I have no assistance. Anyone in the world can contact me instantly and I will answer the message. I don't need an assistant. I don't need a filter because I've created systems that are much more, that work with greater efficacy than the rest of the world. That's neat. How difficult, Paul, is it to convince other people who want to talk to you to, to switch over to these platforms? I never, I, well, I never try to convince anybody. That's the whole point. And there's the dictator Paul side that you might not like. You might, I just say, hey, you want to talk to me? Great. Contact me on Boxer Signal or WhatsApp. I don't do that platform. Well, guess what? You're not going to talk to me. I don't have time. Everybody, everybody converts. I've never had anybody say no. I maybe had one person, but it's for the number of people that contact me. And, and usually what happens is it ends up changing their life because they learn now how to communicate it in a way they never knew before. You know, sometimes in life, I'm going to be tough. Sometimes a little tough love is good for people. Sometimes you can be slapped upside the head and say, wake up. You don't need to keep doing the same stupid things you've been doing for the past 20 years. Maybe now is the time to change. And if I'm that change agent, if someone contacts me and I go, wake up, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being the, 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 the resident asshole from time to time. It's okay because I know the number of people's lives who have been improved because I'm willing to be the resident asshole from time to time. What app should they start with? I think I'm, I'm vacillating between Signal and what's and signal and boxer if 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 you just do a lot of quick communication you want to ask questions and have short little videos up to 60 seconds long and photos definitely boxer it is a game changer it is fast easy easy for everyone to understand it's just simple and good but if you're trying to create a group chat where you're trying to maybe share videos that are two minutes three minutes four minutes long then signal would be a better platform yeah, hopefully that answered the question, but all day long, if I could use one platform, it would be Boxer. It was developed for the Navy SEALs. It was developed for special huh. forces. There's wow. a reason why, because it's super fast, super effective, and it works. I have a question here. You're using this in your organization to say, uh, explain to people how to start up a machine or change a program or do a particular task. Is there a tendency to think. make like, here's a five minute video on this machine versus Here's a 30 second single point lesson kind of thing. Well, if it requires five minutes, it requires five minutes, but we know we try to always keep things as pithy as possible. There's a lot of dead space in videos where there's nothing really being conveyed. And we really try to edit that stuff out and leave the high content. I'll give you one of my favorite process videos I've ever had that I've ever made. And you can go look it up right now on the internet, but we have electrical panels. We have a 50,000 square foot facility. We have three phase power. We have 220 power. We have single phase power. You know, we have all the different power requirements. And we have probably like five or six huge power panels to run all the injection molding machines and everything. And every time the electrician comes to hook up another machine, they say, well, where is the 320 power? Where's the three phase power? Where's the you know, 220? Where's this panel? Where's this panel? It's just like, and I can't remember it all because I'm not an electrician, but I know this stuff, but I'm not an electrician. So we have a QR code on all of our electrical panels that you scan and it gives you a video overview of the entire facility, all the electrical panels, what they feed, what the power sources are, what the amperage is, everything. And it's probably like a four or five minute video. 
And I'm telling you, I can't even tell you the number of times that thing has just saved our butt. Instead of saying, I don't remember, who knows that? 10 people running around trying to figure out what's going on. Never happens again. We have a beautiful QR code and a big YouTube play button on our power panels. It's wow. incredible. In terms of scalability, do you think the approach has limitations in terms of the size of an organization? Doesn't sound like it from Not what you've all. said. <laughs> Are you kidding? Steel, steel case, one of the largest, the largest office steel office furniture manufacturer in the world. Bob Hedrickson, my personal friend and kite serving buddy, director of manufacturing. That's what they use. He puts mm. everybody over to it. No, it has nothing to do with that. As a matter of fact, it'll make you very agile. They'll make a, a you know, a billion dollar company act like a you know a hundred thousand dollar company in terms of agility well you know paul I, I think the thing about that is it's almost like buying an exercise bike and using it to put your laundry on in the basement you know having the tool alone is not enough you've got to have the will to do it you know so well you have to have the, and i say not even the will manny i say you have to have the intelligence to realize what's been put in front of you could change your life and make you so much more effective you know, there, I always say that what I talk about is only for 2% of the world. And there are 2% of the people that are listening to this thing right now. There's a small group of people out there saying, oh, my gosh, this makes total sense. And the rest of you might be thinking to yourself, well, that really won't work for me. That's perfectly fine. It won't work for you. I'm only interested in getting the 2%. I can imagine that, right? Well, that works for Paul and his company. I mean, he, he you know, he gets yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I hear it all the time. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear it all the time. If, we, if only we could manage up, you know, that would be great, but um, <laughs> that would be difficult. So, um, Paul, I have a question here. Um, as far as unusual applications, and, and I guess the person was intrigued by uh, putting a QR code on the panel. Um, is oh, there yeah. any, any other uh, particularly spectacular applications of this technology you, you want to mention? Uh, well, no, I just think the bottom line is videos are densely packed with information. And if you keep them short, they become really effective and they cut down on costs and labor and, and mistakes and they improve quality. And, you know, they, they just have this, this massive uh, positive effect. So, no, just use it. I mean, if people come to my home, I live in a gated community and I type in the word gate. G A T E, and it populates with a YouTube video on how to work the keypad at my comp at my home, and exactly where my house is on Google Earth. It gives everything, so nobody says, "Well, how do I get to your house?" I go gate. It gives them the Google Earth. It tells them the gate code. It tells them how they work the gate code. That you have to wait for three seconds, and the gate will start to open. It says that it closes automatically. I'm in the second driveway on the left hand side. It's just. <laughs> I use it for everything. Yeah, I can see that's fabulous, especially for things that you're doing over and over again. And I guess that's how um, you, you automate the things that you do on a regular basis. And that's very lean. Right. I love it. Exactly. Like, like if you want to see something cool, you could all type into this because this is public. Uh, I have a home in Maui that I rent out all the time. And I made a video of my home in Maui. You type in the word Maui, M-A-U-I 454. And I think it's the third video that will show up. And it's amazing. It's like a 20 minute video. It gives you a total overview of my property and everything. It's got 12,000 views. And the thing is rented all the time because everybody says they've never stayed in a place so beautiful. Of course, it's all driven by video. And nobody's done that. Nobody's done it. If you watch that video, you'll never see a video that shows you exactly what your, the property you're going to stay at and all the details from where Costco is, where the airports are, how long it takes to get places. Everything's done with Google Earth. You're rotating around. You have total spatial orientation on everything. Oh, I'll definitely have to check that one out for sure. For sure. All right, folks, looks like we might have yeah, time. Maui 454. Looks like we have some time for a couple more questions if, if uh, you uh, haven't gotten uh, satisfied yet. Um, you know, I love the idea, though, that just this, this dense information is available and the technology is in everyone's pocket. I mean, that's the part. You know, I noticed when I started doing videos on my phone that most people don't know how to do it. And once I did it, I was like, oh, it's really easy. It's really not that. Yeah, I know. You're a superstar. You're all, all of a sudden, you're a superstar. <laughs> yeah. 
And the funny thing is, too, as a beginning filmmaker or video maker, I can tell you that I know I was real worried about certain things, and other people never even noticed some of the things that I see in the videos. Like, see, they see that flub there, and they're like, no, what, what was that? So I realized that we are more critical of ourselves than other people are. Uh, and I heard it's because we are listening to how we say things, and other people are listening to what the person on the video is saying. So I thought that was kind of neat. I'm getting the I'm getting the, the the electrical panel video for you guys real quick. I'm just typing right now. I'm boxer because I didn't want to say the electrical panel. Although I could electrical panel video electrical panel video here. I'll I'll do a boxer here. I'm sending a boxer right now. You get? Can you guys see me? Can you uh, see me, Danny? I can see you and I can see you're holding your phone. But uh... okay, so here I'm going to send a boxer right now. Hold on. Hey, Lucas Paul. I'm doing a webinar right now and I want to show them the electrical panel video. You know, we have the QR code on the electrical panels to explain the whole thing. Can you send me that link? Can you scan it with your phone real quick and send me the link so I can show them what that video looks like? Okay, so I just sent that to my plant manager and we'll see how quickly he replies back. But, you know, again, so simple. I should have just said it, but I didn't want to interrupt you as we were talking. So there you go. Sure, no, no, I, and I appreciate it. I mean, um, I'm really hoping that the folks that, that are listening and the folks that are going to be watching this video in the future are really going to recognize the idea that um, rich, that dense communication, you know, one oh, done huge. Kind of stuff. You know, it's um, huge. And you, yeah. cut, and you really, until you start doing this, you don't realize how flat and ineffective your communication it really is. When you start doing this, all of a sudden everything just changes. I mean, he could hear the inflection of my voice. I'm a, there's a little bit of urgency. Hey, I'm in a webinar. Can you get this video to me? You know, da 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 da. Or if I just typed it, he wouldn't feel any of that. Or you'd have to use a whole lot of words to explain it. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. And especially for people who don't type, I can see that. So uh, this is great. I see we, uh, if, if there's any last minute questions, we can probably stay on long enough for that. But otherwise, I see we are at the top of the hour. And, uh, Paul, I sure do appreciate your, your time and um, giving giving to LED, giving back to uh, the folks on this call. And everybody learned something. Some people might have learned what they're not going to do, but I hope other people learn, <laughs> hey, this is a best practice moving forward because that's the way I'm treating it. So thank you for that, okay. Paul. Ellen, did you say anything to Paul before he uh, signs us off here? Um, no, thank you very much for your Great. time. And very interesting Absolutely. and engaging. Now, now I'm going to go kite surfing. Oh, because I want I to go with you. Because, <laughs> because I have time. Because I have time to go kite surfing. <laughs> with my because my communication is clear and effective. I have time to go kite surfing. Okay. We're all and jealous. I'm turning green as we speak with envy. Yes. That's right, so. <laughs> Thank you. See, Bye -bye. look at this. I'm I'm even in my bathing suit already. Oh, jeez. <laughs> beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, Paul. Hey, thank you very much. Um, tell you what, we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this off now because folks, uh, remember October, it could be you. Yes, you. So I'm really hoping that uh, you're going to um, step up and maybe learn some new things. I'm here to help. And just so you know, Manny, what I did when you said that, the minute you said that, I forwarded you three or four contacts on WhatsApp of all people who would be incredible speakers that are all in the two second link community all over the world. I already sent you four contacts. I was wondering about that. I, I, okay, yes, thank you for that. I and I did it instantly. I didn't have to type an email. I just went to, went to WhatsApp, clicked on plus, contact, boom, done. It, it was very easy for sure. All right, folks, I think I'm going to cut it off now. Uh, on behalf of ASQ and Lean Enterprise Division, Paul, thank you for taking the time to give back to the community. We surely do appreciate it. And hope you enjoy the rest of your kite surfing day. Oh, I will always. Folks, you can spend your time in a lot of ways. We appreciate you spending the last hour or so of it with us. We hope it uh, paid off and look forward to seeing you again next month. I'm starting to see the same names over and over again, so I almost feel like I know you all. Have a great day, people. Enjoy. Enjoy.